Hello, welcome back to my channel. You're watching What Helen Reads and I'm Helen and today I have another romance recommendation video for you. So today I've got nine recommendations um, with romance books that take place at least at some point um, in a sex club. For a couple of these, the sex club plays quite a large part in not only the relationship between the couples, but also the plot point of the story, while others, uh, the sex club may be just a place where they go to once as a couple, or maybe they've met there. And as I go through some of these recommendations, I'll, I'll explain kind of like the level of attendance at the clubs that these couples have. So the first one that fits perfectly into this category is a book uh, called Come by Becca Jameson. And this is book one in the Flight Club series. There's six books in the series in total and basically the whole series revolves around a group of six friends um, who are all MMA fighters, they are amateur fighters but they kind of meet, met at a um, like a fight gym where they train and they do um, amateur sort of fighting at the weekends and they're also heavily into BDSM, The all of the men in this series are dominants um, and they frequent a sex club. And in this first book in the series, we kind of very much introduce not only to the kind of the group of, of men from the series, the club as well, um, but also it's a great starter for a BDSM relationship because I think the author does a great job of explaining kind of what it's all about because the heroine herself, who in this one is um, Katie, um, has never explored that lifestyle before and so it's kind of a period of self-discovery for her um, with the hero in this one, Rafe, um, very much um, taking her along on this journey and um, encouraging her to explore her sexuality, find out more about the lifestyle and really discover whether or not it's the right thing for her and for them as a couple. But essentially how these two meet is that like I say, Rafe is a amateur fighter. By day, he's actually an accountant and he is training at a gym. And this gym is owned by Katie's uncle. Now, Katie is a lawyer, she works in a law firm, but she's kind of got herself a bit of a stalker and there's this guy following her and she feels really uncomfortable about it. And one day he's following her in a car, so she decides to do a bit of a diversion, stop at her uncle's gym, this fight club gym, and then go in um, and, um, you know, hopefully then it will kind of deter this stalker from, like, kind of continuing to follow her. The thing is, he's actually waiting outside in the car park, and after she's, after she's spoken to her uncle, she leaves the gym, and she realises he's still there, and Rave happens to be just leaving the gym as well, and he's standing by the wall, and she decides that she is going to go up to him and kiss him to make... Again, this guy who's following her believe that she has got a boyfriend and uh, another last desperate attempt really to get rid of this guy who's stalking her. Rafe is obviously a bit taken aback but not unhappy that uh, Katie has basically um, gone up to him and kissed him and they kind of start a bit of a friendship, introduce themselves to each other, she explains what's going on and he basically asks her out for a cup of coffee and then they go on a couple of dates. Now she's ready to take the relationship further but Rafe is really holding back and she doesn't understand why but basically like I said Rafe is into the BDSM lifestyle, he's very much a dominant and he um, realises that Katie doesn't know anything about this world at all and he isn't the kind of person to get himself into a relationship without basically um, fully coming clean to, um, to Katie and um, explaining exactly what his preferences are in the bedroom because it is a deal breaker for him, he is absolutely looking for a submissive and um, so he decides that he is going to uh, explain everything to her basically so that she can really think about if that is something she wants to pursue and if it's a relationship that she wants to pursue with him. Um, and I just really, really like um, the conversations these two have. Rafe really, like I say, encourages her to go and do her research to really think about what she wants and some really, really great scenes where they're in the club where she, he is teaching her how to be a submissive um, and figuring out what she likes and what she doesn't like and things like that. Then the next book I'm going to recommend is also part of a uh, series of books that I very, very much revolve around a sex club, um, the Salacious Players Club, in fact, of which there are six books in the series. And the one I personally want to recommend is Eyes on Me, uh, by Sarah Kate, which is book two in the series. I think this 
particular book in this series is very very like under appreciated loads of people like some of the other books in the series much more and they talk about those more frequently but i absolutely loved um this second book in the series um, and we're following a couple called mia and garrett in this one now garrett is one of the owners of the sex club so there's four owners in total and each one of them sort of get their own book um, and mia happens to be his step sister but he's never grown up with her. It's a recent thing where his, uh, um, their parents basically have recently got married. And so he um, has only known her later in life. Definitely not when uh, they ever lived together or anything like that. But they do have to share sort of like, you know, they do have to see each other at, you know, fa family gatherings and holidays and things like that. Um, but they, at first they don't particularly get on. Uh, they're certainly not friends but things very much start to change between them and it changes for a couple of reasons one like i say garrett is one of the owners of the salacious players club uh so he fr frequents the club um quite a lot as part of his job um but he never actually gets uh involved physically in any of the scenes at the club or goes into any of the rooms in fact he is a voyeur so he very much likes to watch and he likes to watch cam girls and one night he is watching some cam girls um, on uh, on his computer and one of the cam girls that he sees is actually his stepsister Mia now he doesn't realize that it's Mia at first and then obviously when he twigs on by then it's too late because he's kind of addicted to watching her he really really enjoys watching her and they start kind of this um, conversation this relationship between them where he very much knows who she is but she doesn't know who he is because she doesn't know obviously who's been watching watching her um and then they have to go to a um family um holiday and then they become in close proximity with each other um and that's when they start to um develop their relationship further and she starts to realize he's the one that's been watching her um and things go from there so then the next one i've got on my list is a lesson in blackmail by kd robishaw and this is actually a novella and it is kind of like a um book six um of the club alias series now this is one of those where we don't spend much time at the club at all but i feel like it does play quite a key role in their relationship and kind of how they get together so this one we're following nathaniel and he's actually in his last year of high school he is 18 and he has very much got his eyes on the librarian and the librarian is evelyn um he comes from a very very wealthy family and his family has paid for a lot of this school i can't 100 percent remember if they own the school but they've definitely um uh, gifted a lot of money to the school so like you know the library pretty much belongs to him and his family um and as such he is um um, a bit of a bully um uh, but because he's got his eyes on the library and he doesn't want anyone else to have it either he spends a lot of his time in the library and being just a little bit of a dick if i'm honest to her um saying things he shouldn't um just generally making her life a bit of a misery but she really really loves her job and she knows she needs to be nice to him because she's afraid that his father will basically get the sack if uh if he finds out that Evelyn has stood up to Nath uh, Nathaniel in any way. The thing is, Evelyn's got herself a little bit of a secret because she has very submissive tendencies and um, during the week while she's at school, she has to behave and act very, very prim and proper. I can't exactly remember, but I think she is either suffers quite badly from anxiety or something similar to that, where she basically feels like all week, like she's just sort of like, it's sort of trapped in this cage and at, at the weekend, she needs to be able to release um, sort of the, the anxiety and the tension and she does that by going to a sex club and basically being a submissive for the night the weekend and that's kind of how she gets by so she she lives um you know she works all week and lives for the time when she can basically be in this club now because Nathaniel was so obsessed with the librarian one night he decides he's going to follow her to see what she's going to be doing on a Friday night and he follows her to this sex club and he goes in after her and he basically sees that she is she has uh, submissive tendencies and that's when he basically decides to confront her now this book, this book is called a lesson in blackmail because essentially what he's now going to do is use the information he's got to blackmail her into basically seeing him and going on a date with him and letting her him go back to her house 
but it doesn't really last too long he uh he starts off by being bully like but he very quickly just um explains to Evelyn that he absolutely uh, is obsessed with her wants to be with her um, and then they start a relationship together. So okay, then the next one I want to talk about is a director by Renee Rose. This is actually a mafia romance. And in this one, we are following Lucy and Raville. And it's book one in the Chicago Bradford series. Now, again, the sex club right, plays a very small but important part in this book because Ravel is a dominant and uh, Lucy is exploring her submissive tendencies. And they happen to meet in a sex club. Um, in New York now it's kind of like uh, not strictly auction night but basically there's a there's a night where they're going to spin the wheel and they match couples up together um, and they basically get paired up for the evening in this sex club and they have amazing chemistry together they have an amazing night um, together and um, but they don't actually kind of like know who each other is um, and in fact I think they give false names that said um, while Rabble is the head of the Chicago uh, Russian Mafia, uh, the Chicago Bratva, Lucy is actually a lawyer and so she um, is very switched on and um, when he takes his clothes off and she sees him covered in uh, tattoos, she quickly uh, comes to the suspicion, the realisation that he is in fact a member of the Mafia. She doesn't necessarily know uh, how high up in the organisation he is but she figures that he uh, is probably quite a dangerous man but still they have a lovely evening together and then after that they go their separate ways the thing is after this evening she finds herself that she is pregnant and um, she does debate whether she's going to try and find out who this guy is because she could easily ring the club and find out his real name and things and then track him down but because she suspects that he's in the mafia she decides that she's going to keep this to herself and she's going to bring the baby up by herself um the thing is unbeknownst to her although they met in new york they actually both live in chicago and it's not long before he is in need of a lawyer and he goes to her law offices but a couple of months have passed and she is now showing and when he looks down at her stomach realizes she's pregnant he does the math in his head and then realizes that she's having his baby and of course he's not too happy about this in fact he's pretty livid that she's kept this from him and he decides that he's going to kidnap her and keep her captive until the baby is born when he's gonna basically bring up the baby for himself um, and the relationship kind of goes from there um but i really like this one like i say the sex club is only plays a role at the start of this book um, but I think he plays a very vital and pivotal role in their relationship in terms of how they meet and how they get together and the fact that she ends up having his baby. So. And then I want to talk about The Auction by Maggie Cole, which is actually the first part of a duet, um, the club indulgence duet. And in this one, we're following Riggs and Blakely. Now, Riggs is Blakely's father's business partner, and they've been business partners for uh, a number of years. In fact, um, Blakely's father was Riggs's mentor and he very much looked up to him. Now they've made millions of pounds in this business together, they kind of like in investments and things like that. Um, but Riggs has recently found out that Blakely's father has basically been um, stealing money from him and the investors and he is not too happy about it and he has vowed to take his revenge. The thing is he can't go to the authorities and kind of dob his business partner in because that would basically ruin his business for himself and all the trust that the investors have in him would be shattered um, and so he is coming up with a scheme to um, ruin her father's life basically and take him out of the equation altogether leaving the business um, in, solely in his name and that's kind of his revenge plan. Meanwhile Blakely has actually been on the run and missing for about four years because when she came of age, um, her father was trying to um, ma get, marry her off um, and she didn't want to marry the men that her father was trying to set her up with. Um, and so she decided that she was going to run away from home and kind of live um, by herself, independently by herself. But her father's been trying to track her down all this time. So she's basically kind of been sort of on the run. And one night, her father's men actually finally catch up with her and they find her and she realizes that and she tries to escape but they actually catch her and on the way um to taking her back to her father their car breaks down and she takes it as an opportunity to again 
um, escape from the vehicle and kind of run off. And she runs straight into the first building that she sees, uh, which happens to be um, a sex club, this club Indulgence. And then she finds herself herded into this sort of like auction lineup where these women at this club are going to be auctioned off. And that is where she bumps back into Riggs again. So four years have passed. So she knew, um, like I say, Riggs and her father were a business partner. So she's known Riggs since she was um, a fairly young girl. So she knows who he is. Um, but Riggs happens to be there because he's actually there because he's a dominant and he was looking to um, uh, bid on a, a new submissive, basically, that he could take home. And then when he sees Blakely, he obviously also recognises Blakely and he thinks, this is my perfect opportunity. One, to uh, get my revenge on her father. But also, he's had a bit of a secret attraction to her and he's thinking, I can t kill two bids with one stone here. I can basically bid on her at the auction. She can come home with me and be my submissive. Um, but it's also um, an inn where I can basically get some more leverage over her father. And so kind of that's what he does. Now, at first, he thinks that Blakely is there out of choice and that she is deliberately want to be auctioned off but very very quickly he realizes she's not a submissive at all she doesn't know anything about this lifestyle um and also that she was kind of running away from her father's men so he kind of then does another deal with her to say well stay with me i know you weren't intending to be my submissive but stay with me be my submissive and i'll protect you i'll take care of you and make sure your dad doesn't get his hands back on you um, and you can kind of stay with me and he kind of does a deal where she's going to stay um, for I think it's a year if not it was a couple of months and then it turned out to be a year the thing is because she was bought in this auction by this uh, at this sex club the sex club do have a responsibility to her to make an, a bit of safeguarding and make sure that she is safe and so there is a, um, uh, a clause basically in this contract that after a couple of weeks she has to go back to the club and he has to prove that he can um, safely dominate her and that she is um, the perfect submissive for him and then they'll allow them to continue to be together otherwise the club will null and void this contract and she won't be able to be with Riggs anymore so he tries to then convince her that she she needs to be trained to be a proper submissive so that she can take his instructions and that then the club will allow them to stay together um, and so I thought this was like a really interesting sort of like dynamic and you know part of the story that was still connected to this sex club even though the majority of the sort of the scenes that happen are actually at Riggs's house um but it's how they met together kind of in this club and then the club have still got some sort of like ties to them as a couple because of the way this um, contract has been drawn up and the responsibility the club has to make sure that she's uh, in a safe um, a safe environment um, so yeah I there was way more to that book than just this element but I found this particular part of the book really interesting so I thought it was a perfect recommendation for this video then I want to talk about another Sarah Kate book which is the anti-hero and that's book one in the good brothers series now again this is a different but interesting take on a sex club because essentially what happens in this one is that Adam um, is the hero in this one and his father is a pastor and um he so he's been very much brought up in a religious household and very much made to believe that places like sex clubs are um evil and should be removed from the earth and his dad has very been vocal against these sex clubs in the community and has been trying to get them shut down also he's always looked up to his father wants to take his place one day and works very very closely with his father so imagine his surprise when he realizes that his father has been lying to him all this time in fact he frequents a sex club himself and has been cheating on adam's mother and adam massively goes into a tailspin over this falls out with his father starts to question his faith but is very very angry about the situation and ultimately wants to get his revenge and that's where sage our heroine comes into this story because sage is actually the girlfriend of somebody who owns part of this sex club where, where adam's dad goes um, and she's trying to help her boyfriend kind of like with the business and everything and she's got some ideas um but the boyfriend has been keeping her at arm's length he's kind of been dicking her around a little bit he's been pretending that she can be um going with him as a full business partner but then doesn't allow that to happen so it comes to a bit of a head where she 
also decides that she wants to get revenge on her boyfriend uh, for basically messing around all this time and not following through on any of his promises. And so Adam and Sage find themselves in a uh, mutually beneficial uh, scenario where they're going to pretend to fake date. And not only that, but Adam decides he wants to take videos of them having sex and then posting them on the internet because he thinks this will basically really embarrass his father um, and he'll be able to get his revenge basically. And so they start to then develop this kind of sexual relationship between them. The videos that they're creating are actually supposed to be fake to start off with. So they're gonna fake um, having sex with each other in these sorts of videos. Um, and at first it is fake, but the more time they spend together, obviously like they've got great chemistry together, the more time they spend together, the more they grow to like each other. And Adam actually does then start to explore a bit more about his own sexuality, he starts to really question some of his beliefs, um, challenge some of the things that his father used to tell him, some of the things that he kind of wanted out of life, and start to kind of like piece things together in terms of, you know, how he treated his mother, how he treated the uh, his brothers in the family. So again, I felt that this book is not necessarily about a couple who go to a sex club or being in the sex club, but the sex club itself plays quite a pivotal role in the storyline and how things progress and the relationship with his father and also how Adam ends up meeting Sage. Um, so I wanted to throw this one in here as well. So the next one is Defiled by Poppy Aster and this is book one in the Monster Gentleman's Club series. Um, these are all really short stories so they're only 60 or 70 pages each and actually this is part of a trilogy so there's three short stories that you piece together to make one novella really about the same couple but it's all surrounding this monster gentleman's club now this is sort of erotic romance there isn't much to this storyline other than basically the sex that happens at this club um, but i thought poppy Astor did a really really good job and um, because the book was so short um, and also because it's mainly an erotic romance i think she did a fantastic job of making us fall in love with these characters making them believe that they had great chemistry together and that they would ultimately um, feel like they wanted to be together, that they were fated mates essentially. And I thought she did a great job in just such a short number of pages, really, really pulling that out and making you believe that this couple really should be together. So the premise of this one, so this is a monster sort of romance. And the premise of this one is that there are monsters in the world, all different kinds of monsters, and the ones that want to uh, frequent a monster gentleman's club. And they invite human women to come to this club to service the men. Um, but basically they need to keep the monster community a secret um, to protect the community. Um, and so what actually happens is these women come, they get auctioned off at the Monster Gentlemen's Club. They get paid a lot of money. Oh, and the monster that's bid on them basically gets to do anything they want to them for the evening. Um, and then the following morning, they actually have their memories wiped and they get sent away. So basically, they have no recollection of who they've been with, what happened to them, but they're left with a lot of money in their bank account. And this has all been working out absolutely tickety-boo. Until um, Mercy comes along because Mercy is a human who just happens to get off at the wrong bus stop and when she gets off at the wrong bus, bus stop she's kind of chased down the street by uh, dangerous looking men um, and she happens to find herself in the gentleman's club and she's mistaken for a human that's come along to the auction um, and basically put into this auction and it's Jarek that ends up bidding on her and taking her back to his room for the evening. Now Jarek figures out pretty quickly that she doesn't know where she is. She has absolutely no idea this club existed and she has no idea what's going on in this club. Now any decent person would obviously um, let her go and say, oops, our mistake, sorry about that. Um, you obviously didn't mean to be here. We're gonna just send you on your way. Um, but Jarek, is very taken with her and he decides, no, he's actually paid his money to have her for the evening and he's gonna have her for the evening. And no harm, no foul, because at the end of the day, she's gonna have her memory wiped anyway and she'll go away very, very rich. So he kind of justifies to himself that actually he's gonna keep her in the room with him and have his wicked way with her. And that's basically what happens. 
Of course, Mercy is a bit shocked and horrified to start with, but she quickly, very quickly comes around. They have great chemistry together. They do end up being fated mates, so they have this like unexplainable pull to towards each other and she has a fantastic evening. Now in the morning, we think as readers that maybe he's not gonna wipe her memory and maybe there's a future for them, but that is not what happens. He follows through, he basically injects her with this special chemical that's going to wipe her memory and she goes away with loads of money in her account. The thing is there's other things going on in the background here. Jarek is actually kind of a werewolf is essentially what he is. That's not how he's 100% described but he's basically a werewolf um, and he has found his fated mate but there's some rules around dating the same woman twice. She can't come back to the club um, and there's several um, opposing families that wouldn't want him to find his fate in mate either. Um, but in Mercy's world also she has a very very uh, challenging living, living situation and her father is um, uh, basically a good for nothing. She's the one that has to work several jobs to earn the money to pay the bills and he's only too happy to take her money from her. So when she kind of wakes up the following morning with no memory but discovers she's got a lot of money in her bank account she has to try and hide this from her father as well and um, but it's not too long till she's drawn back um she doesn't know why but she has this sense of being needing to be drawn back to this club to find Jarek um and of course when she goes back to the club um, people recognise her but she doesn't recognise them and so I really like this one as well because like I say it's, it was very very quick to read you can just read it in just in an hour Poppy has to pack loads in here in terms of you know their backstories and um, their chemistry between them the evening that they spend together but some additional danger that's lurking in the background so that very much leaves us on a cliffhanger for books two and three in the series um, and you, can, like I say, you can read them all in just two or three hours, so I would highly recommend. Then we have Vicious Hearts by Jagger Cole. This is book two in the Dark Hearts series. This is another Mafia romance, and we're following Killian, who is the head of the Irish Mafia, and Una. Now, again, the sex club doesn't play a massive role throughout the whole of this book, but it certainly plays quite an important role at the start of this book because um, Killian is at a sex club and he meets Una and one thing leads to another and they decide to uh, go into a private room at this club um, and unbeknownst to Killian, Una is actually an assassin and she's been sent to kill him and so as soon as they get into the room in this club she uh, basically makes her assassination attempt on Killian and he is gravely injured um, and she runs off believing that she has completed her task but in fact she hasn't like I say she's left him very injured but he isn't um he's still very much alive um, and he is pissed he's very very angry about this situation and he's not going to stop at anything until he tracks her down finds out who she is why she's done it what's going on um, and of course because this is a mafia romance what happens is when he finally catches up to her he's by this point he's kind of become obsessed with her um, and he decides the only way around this to prevent a war is to marry her so I absolutely love this one and like I say this is another one where the sex club doesn't play a massive role but it certainly plays quite a big role in the start of this book and how they actually end up together so um wanted to give a shout out to this one as well. And then my last recommendation is actually fan fiction. It's Contradictions by Ampersand and it's a Harry Potter fanfic um, and it's a Draco Malfoy and a Hermione Granger pairing in this one. Now this one is very much that Draco is a dominant, Hermione is a submissive um, and there is a magical um, sex club basically that Draco is a member of and Hermione joins because she's interested in exploring her sexuality, um, learning more about her submissive tendencies um, and um, she makes an arrangement. So basically because this is a magical club, she wants to protect her identity so you can take a potion to basically change the way you look so that people don't recognize you. Um, and so that is their first meeting where basically she is paired with Draco 
um, and she basically meets him in a room in the sex club. Both of them have got disguises on, um, but he does a fantastic job in dominating her. She has an absolutely amazing time. And as their evening gets to the climax, as it were, her mask slips and he realises he has just dominated Hermione Granger. And then when she realises it's Draco, she is um, absolutely devastated and she apparates out of the room um, and he then finds her the following day because he said you can't leave after a scene like that um, aftercare is really important and you shouldn't have run off and let me make sure you, that you're okay but in doing this they then have a conversation and she continues to be intrigued and they agree that they're gonna continue to explore their sexuality with each other at this club so if you like fan fiction if you like Harry Potter, if you like Draco and Hermione, absolutely recommend this one. It was really, really good and interesting. And I like the way their kind of relationship devolved around the BDSM kink and this magical sex um, club that they're both members of. So I would highly recommend. So there we have it. That is nine recommendations for books that feature sex clubs in some way. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from me. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. The dreaded flu has finally caught up with me. I'm feeling much better now, but I'm left very much with a blocked up nose, quite a bad cough. So I'm gonna see how I get on recording this video. Um, activity sort of like the scenes within the book take place in the sex clubs I'm not gonna get very far am I just move on just move on hopefully you can salvage something from that right and I'll explain kind of like the the level of the attendance if you like as we go through oh I'm really struggling I'm really struggling but hopefully won't be too bad. Right. Yeah, so like I say, I really like eyes on me. I like, uh, like I uh, I've already said it. You're just duplicating yourself. I thought Sarah Kate did a really good job of exploring some of those. Um, what? What did she explore? I don't know how to wrap this one up. But anyway. It's a struggle to even breathe. Very emotional. I don't know, I can't even remember. I can't even remember if I'm honest.